Oh, hi, it's you again. In this week's YouTube Art School episode, I'll go over the portfolio that got me hired as a game artist for Blizzard Entertainment back in 2009. But more importantly, I'll share with you my best tips, my top tips to create the best portfolio possible. Over the years, I've reviewed countless portfolios. So take notes if this is something that you're interested in. Time to level up your portfolio. Oh, heck, class is starting. Alright, class is in session. Pay attention. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you have heard me say many times before that your portfolio is like your passport as an artist. It's the only thing that matters. Not your diploma, not where you studied. Nobody cares about that except maybe your parents. What matters is what you can do and there's no better way to showcase that than your artist portfolio. Mine was by no means extraordinary, but it still got me hired at Blizzard. The top game company at the time, despite the fact that I dropped out of school and I was living in a different country. Clearly, I must have done something right. So let's check it out as I go over a bunch of tips. <laughs> Back in my days, the place to host your portfolio was DeviantArt, CG Society, CG Hub, and of course, you know, still valid, a personal website. I got discovered on DeviantArt for all of the art jobs I ever had, but top portfolio platforms change every couple of years. The first thing to make sure you do is to have your art as a collection online somewhere, preferably on many different platforms. Nowadays, you'd probably be looking at Instagram, Twitter, those two platforms have the most traffic, but also probably ArtStation and maybe Pixiv. It's all free. If you're willing to spend a few hours setting up a custom website with something like Squarespace or WordPress, that's also good. Looks professional. Now that you have a place or many to showcase your art, what the heck do you include in that portfolio? In terms of quantity, my typical recommendation to my students is to have at least like 15 to 20 artworks, but less than 50. You know, most studios have art recruiters and they see hundreds of portfolios every week. They don't want to have to filter through a bunch of sketches to find the gold nuggets in your portfolio. They expect you to do that. If you don't have enough art yet, it's fine. Just include whatever you have and fill up the rest over time. It's just hard to gauge your abilities if there are only a few art pieces. If you have too many pieces though, remove the worst ones and keep all the bangers. Generally, I'd avoid including rough or unfinished sketches, but if your sketches are awesome, of course, Maybe uh, create a folder in your portfolio and put them all in there so they don't take too much space visually. And just like you want to leave a good impression on a first date by dressing nicely, put all the best stuff at the top of your portfolio so that it's the first thing that everyone sees. And don't hesitate to overdo it too. You might not ever need to spend as much time on a character concept if you work on a game team, but do spend that extra time for the piece in your portfolio to leave as good of an impression as possible. Push the rendering a bit more, make sure it's presented well, go all out. A common question is if you should include fan art or not. And that one will kind of depend. If you're an illustrator, in a studio you would basically be doing polished fan art of the game. You know, like taking existing characters, environments from the project that you're on, and creating cool promotional art out of it. Very similar to actual fan art. In that case, it makes sense to include illustrations containing characters from existing IPs. Like, you know, if you're doing a splash art using League of Legends characters, well, that's great. If you're going more for the character concept portfolio, it would still be fine, but only if you give your fan art a cool twist, like maybe doing outfit variants for a popular game character, maybe reimagining characters or monsters from a movie in a different time period, maybe whatever. Basically, you just want the fan art to be a unique take on the subject. Otherwise, it's usually not something that most teams want to see. Obviously, though, at a fundamental level, you want your portfolio to be full of good art, your best art, and that goes without saying. To help you build the best portfolio possible, you might want to check out my art program that just happens to be on sale this month to celebrate its five year anniversary. I've been continuously updating it since and adding new content, subtitles, and recently a week by week companion guide to help you structure your studies to extract the most out of the program. So I'll be increasing the price next month to reflect the added value, but you can get it on sale at a massive discount for now with the link in the video description. Don't miss out. All right, now, do you just put anything in your portfolio? Environments, characters, monsters, creatures, props? Just like fun art, this will kind of depend. 
it might be a good idea to have a variety if you're looking to get a job at a smaller studio, like an indie studio, for example, where you might be the only artist and will need to wear a lot of hats. But normally, more variety equals diluted skills. If you're drawing, painting, sculpting, a little bit of everything, then you didn't spend that time focusing only on one thing. Makes sense. There's almost no way that you can be as good as someone who spent the same amount of time focusing only on one topic instead. Specializing is usually what I'd recommend. Focus on what you love doing, but pick one thing. In my case, as you can see, it was characters. Since I was so focused on characters, by the time I was approached to join Blizzard, I had a lot of characters to show. Not much of anything else, but as a big studio, you know, they tend to have specialized roles. And uh, yeah, during my time there, 99% of what I did were characters. So, you know, maybe keep that in mind. Smaller studios, more varied portfolios, bigger studios, more specialized portfolios. Another thing that for sure helped my portfolio stand out was its focus. I had been playing Blizzard games all my childhood, so a lot of my art was inspired by their art. It made me a natural fit for them, since they could more easily imagine me fitting on a team. The more plug and play you seem, the better. If you have certain local studios that you're interested in, or maybe working on a specific game or movie or whatever you're building your portfolio for, try to tailor it to the employer. So many times I've sat in interviews at Blizzard where an applicant looking to join our team would come in with a solid portfolio with featuring art that you might expect maybe for a Call of Duty game, you know, like realistic military stuff. Nothing to do with the style that we were working with. So needless to say, those people never fared too well. On the other hand, someone like me, you know, coming in with a portfolio full of fantasy characters and bright, vibrant colors, they could imagine me adopting their style a lot more easily. And I'm a less risky hire as a result. It's not always possible, especially early on if you don't have a lot of art in your portfolio, but adjusting the content of your portfolio for the job that you're after is a big advantage. And then we're down to the last three tips. Quick ones too. In a similar vibe to the previous tip, what your portfolio contains is usually what employers will ask of you. The problem with having many different things is they might hire you to do the one thing in your portfolio that you least like doing. I have a few friends who got boxed in at work doing like FX when they actually wanted to be character artists or environment artists, simply because they had some VFX in their portfolio when they got hired. And then by having only characters in mind, like I said, all I ever did at work were characters. Often though, the question about your portfolio might be more, are my skills good enough, right? Fortunately, there's always a way to find out. It takes a little bit of digging, but look for studios or projects that you like, something that you would see yourself working for, and look on like LinkedIn or online elsewhere to find the name of some junior artists that are working there. And uh, well, try looking up their portfolios. You can always find a few and it'll give you a really good idea of the level required to have a shot there. Nothing better to compare yourself against than others who actually got the job. And my final tip is to always keep your portfolio updated. It's hard, but don't let feelings decide if you should keep an artwork or not. Be as objective as possible about it. A good starting point is to usually not keep art that's over two years old, since that should be way outdated. That's just a rough guideline, but if you're actively working on your skills, there's no way that you would be able to maintain fewer than 50 art pieces in it in your portfolio after two years, unless you got rid of some of them along the way. As time goes by, you get better. So when you have a large enough portfolio, make it a habit that when you put a new piece in, you get an old piece out. Keep it fresh, keep it up to date. It just looks a lot better for potential employers. And uh, well, that's gonna be it for this week's class. Like I said in the beginning, my portfolio was nothing amazing. If anything, I doubt I'd be able to get a job with it right now. The level of artists has gone up quite a bit since. You all have such easy access to art education, whether it be here on YouTube or affordable art programs like my own or others. But the baseline for a successful portfolio hasn't changed since. Hope it helps make yours the best it can be. And before I sign out, since you've been a good student, listening so attentively without interrupting me, you can go ahead and grab my custom brush set for free with the link in the video description. Also, make sure that you're on time for next week's class.